This video is sponsored by PCBWay. What's up everyone, Max here. This time we're going to make an indoor slash outdoor mini battery powered Wi-Fi security camera based on the ESP32 Cam Wi-Fi development board camera module, which will use a pretty sophisticated camera web server code equipping the DIY surveillance camera with a lot of functions and possibilities. So yeah, this camera can be accessed through its own unique web server and also saves video to an SD card. I'll also run you through most of everything you need to know to also succeed with a project like this. Without further ado, let's Let's get things started. The ESP32 AI Thinker, a $9 development board camera module with its 2 megapixel camera sensor. At the back of the module is where you have the actual Wi Fi chip, and at the front of the module is where you clip on the camera sensor. The chip even supports Bluetooth connectivity. It's equipped with 10 GPIO pins for various different sensors and other things you want to connect to it. It's also got an SD card port for saving captured videos and pictures. Just before we move on, let me introduce the sponsors of this video. PCBWay is a company who provides custom printed circuit board prototyping service. One of the only well-known PCB companies who also do 3D printing and CNC metal machining on the side. They also do PCB assembly along with free shipping. Get an instant quote, upload a file of your prototype to their website, select specifications, and order today from any one of their services. As a new customer, you get a free $5 coupon. A link is in the description below this video to PCB cbway.com. Check them out. To program the camera board, we'll need to use an FTDI module, also known as a USB to serial converter, since the camera board doesn't have its own USB port to connect it up. Now let's hook up the FTDI to the ESP32 cam. Here's a circuit diagram showing you the connections between the FTDI and ESP32. Once you've connected it like so, be sure to add a jumper between GPIO1 and ground. This connection is important to program the ESP. Connect the FTDI to your computer. And right before uploading the code, always be sure to press the reset button. First, let me show you how it all works with a basic code called the camera web server. To get such code and its libraries, you'll first have to copy an ESP32 JSON link online and paste it in the Preferences tab in the Arduino IDE. Next, go to File, Examples, and under ESP32, click on Camera, then Camera Web Server, and it'll open up the example code. What you'll want to do first is select your camera model. Make sure you have commented all the camera models which you don't have and leave one of them uncommented. I'm using the AI Thinker. Next, type in your Wi-Fi credentials including your SSID or network name and password and be sure not to make any spelling mistakes. Make sure you have the following board, partition scheme, and some other things I have selected, like on my screen, and also select your COM port. Upload the code to the ESP32 module. Once it's finished uploading, unplug the jumper that you've connected earlier and press the reset button. It's important to press the onboard reset button before use. To access the web server, you need some sort of IP address, so open up the serial monitor, wait till it starts up until it gives you the IP address, copy it and paste it into your web browser or just memorize it and type it into your phone's browser. Once the web server has opened up, it should look like this. There's one panel of camera settings, a start stream button, get still button, and enroll face button at the bottom. Next, we'll upload the final code which includes a whole lot of new features and allows you to save video to an SD card. Connections from the FTDI to the ESP, of course, stay the same. When it comes to picking the right cable, choose one that is of higher quality and one that delivers the most current. Once again, right before uploading, check that you have this jumper connected and that you press the onboard reset button to set the ESP32 cam into flash mode. I left a link in the description below this video to where you can download the code folder containing the more sophisticated code. Open up the sketch and once again, like we've done before, select your camera model. Go to the My Config tab over here and enter your Wi-Fi credentials up here. Also be sure to type in your internet host name and your internet gateway, which can be found in the internet settings of your computer. Down here is where you type in your FTP server parameters if you want to have the footage go to an FTP server. As you can see, this code includes a lot more extensions, but of course, I'm not going to go into detail about them. Right after you have uploaded the code, it's important to unplug this jumper and press the reset button once again. Go into your serial monitor and make sure you have a matching baud rate of 115200. Wait till your camera starts up and then copy the IP address it throws at you. Paste it into your browser opening the web server. It should have the three panels, camera control, camera settings, and other settings containing your Wi-Fi credentials and FTP credentials. 
Pressing the start stream button, I appear, oh hi there, and it seems to work pretty well without any lag. You're even able to control the onboard LED flash. If you're not into using an FTP server to transfer video files over the internet, you, you can just unclick the SD card and plug it into your computer to view the raw files there. But to then view the recorded MJPEG files, you'll need to convert them into MP4 videos. So now it's time to make the final camera in which the ESP32 cam module will be sitting in. First step in making the security camera is to allow the ESP to connect to an external antenna. To do that, we'll need to desolder the zero ohm resistor connecting to the onboard antenna and instead resoldering it this way so it's connecting to the external antenna port. And trust me, this is one of the trickiest steps in assembling this security camera. But having done this, it makes a huge improvement in signal. Desolder the two rows of pins from the camera module. Without the pins in the way, we're now able to put a battery from behind. Glue on one of these one cell charging boards onto your 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. Then connect up the battery to the board accordingly. Make sure you solder the battery wires to where it says B plus and B minus, also known as the board's battery terminals. Connect a couple of wires going from the camera module to the charging module with a switch. Over here I decided to add on an extended row of pin headers so I can reprogram the module whenever I need to. Next you're going to make the case for the security camera's hardware. I chose the flat PVC enclosure as my first case for the security camera. And while things seemed to be going well until I realized that the shorting of the camera module's input pins by the battery's case had actually fried the charging module. Since these things only cost about a buck, it wasn't a huge loss, though I did learn from my mistake. After replacing the charging board, I decided to also add an LED to the input terminals of the ESP32 can, also adding a 220 ohm resistor as there is a high power input. So now when you switch on the security camera, this LED indicates that it is active. Here's the security camera's circuit diagram. Thinking back about my previous mistake, this time I taped up the bottom of the battery and hot glued up any exposed camera module terminals and charging board terminals to prevent from any shorting. You can spray paint your case in whichever color you'd like, I chose white. Now it's time to fit all of the hardware into its case, while also bending the camera sensor's flex cable to fit in at the exact right spot. After I did a couple of tests, I realized something wasn't working and had a suspicion that something inside was broken, and sure enough, now it's the camera sensor's ribbon cable that got ripped. As I didn't have any spare ones, I had no choice but to order another camera module and use its camera sensor as the replacement to mine. That's it, I just simply had enough of this case. So I switched to a cylindrical one, which also means I had to replace the battery. Keep in mind that these are just two lithium ion batteries paralleled, so it's also 3.7 volts. After having replaced the battery, this is how things are going to sit in this case. I'm going to mark out the areas where I need to drill. And this is how the container looks like after all the holes and gaps are made for all the parts and components to poke through. For your case, also don't forget to make an SD card slot cut out. Using a turpentine cleaning solution, you can clean off any of the marks created by the marker. With this case, I'm going for a black and clear kind of look, so I'm only sanding the back part for painting. If you want to be able to mount your security camera to something, then glue on one of these GoPro mounts. Now it's time to spray paint the back part of the case. Attaching the face of the security camera on, whoa, things are starting to look cool. As one of the last steps, we're going to mount everything into the case. Hey. 
wrap some electrical tape around the adjoining part of the case to keep water out, dust, and all sorts of other things. To protect the SD card slot from having any water get in, make a rubber plug to seal that point off. And you can even seal off the power port or charging port. So now let's use the battery powered Wi-Fi security camera in its final form by switching it on and typing in its IP address into a web browser. By pressing the start stream button, I can scroll down and oh, here I see myself waving to the camera. I can scroll up to the resolution selector and select a different resolution such as a lower one which lifts up the FPS. Like the highest resolution will give you 5 FPS and the lowest will give you about 30. So if the live feed is not appearing, simply press the stop stream button and the start stream button again or simply reset the camera and make sure you refresh. With the get still button, you can capture images. This selector over here allows you to play back video that you have recorded. Scrolling down, you can view the clips right here. There's also an FTP upload feature, a save capture slider, which should always be on, the lamp slider, which turns the lamp on and off. There's a motion sensitivity slider and night switch slider. And if you press the show motion button, you can actually get to see what goes on on the AI side of things and how it detects motion to start recording. And down here you have additional information such as whether it's recording, ambient light, whether it's nighttime or not, the camera temperature, how much space has been taken up and how much is left on the SD card. I thought this wouldn't be a complete surveillance camera if it couldn't be hooked up to the wall. So I quickly assembled a mount consisting of GoPro mount accessories and screwed the camera on top. The bottom bracket had a double sided tape adhesive which allows me to stick the whole thing onto a wall. So I thought it would be helpful of me to mention some more information about troubleshooting and general things you should know about the ESP32 cam. Also before you go out and make your own security camera. Do keep in mind that you can adjust focus on the camera sensor by simply turning the lens. And the inserted camera should either be an OV2640 or OV7670. To the ESP32 cam you can also hook up an external lamp, PIR motion sensor, temperature sensor and microphone. Check that you have formatted your SD card before using it in the security camera. The ESP32 cam module can consume a lot of current in bursts, which means a certain amount of its features are being used at the same time and it requires a lot of power. So if you're going to use the security camera for long periods of time, it's best to keep it connected and plugged in. And yes, it's safe to keep it plugged in the whole time. About the software stuff, if you're getting something called a brownout error that can be seen in the serial monitor, that means your board is not getting enough current and you'll have to either change out the battery or if you're connected to the computer, you'll have to find a USB cable that delivers more current. Since the security cameras that recorded MJPEG files are not proper video files and can't be accepted by most media players, you'll have to convert them online into MP4 files. And if you get this error popping up, that means something happened to your camera sensor. It's either fried, the ribbon cable is broken, or it's just simply the wrong camera sensor. The only limitation I have with this security camera is that I cannot go anywhere in the world and view what's happening or even to another local Wi-Fi network. To do that, I'd need to hook it up with something called Home Assistant, which which I may cover in a future video. But if you can figure that out for your setup, then good for you. At the moment, you can get one of these camera modules for about 10 bucks, which makes it a good option. In total, this camera cost me about $12 to make. And if you didn't already have some of the parts and you're building this camera, then it may cost you anywhere from 12 to 20 bucks to make. That is still pretty cheap for such a security camera. 
All right, everyone, if you enjoyed watching this video or found it informative, don't forget to hit it a like, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below about the camera. You guys can follow me on Instagram, and if you really appreciate what I do, I'd much appreciate a financial donation to my Bitcoin wallet. I've left a link in the description to where you can donate. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.